April 7th of 1982, we made 65 egg salad sandwiches and brought them to the corner lot here on Soledad Street, set up a card table with a sign that said free sandwiches and waited. And people were wandering around and, and most people who came up to us said, what's the catch? There's got to be a catch. What's the catch? And well, we're just here. We're, tr we're trying to do something with our lives. We're trying to, anyway. After a couple hours, we thought, well, maybe we should pay people to take our sandwiches. <laughs> All the sandwiches went and we gave a promise, well, we'll be back tomorrow. And been a whole bunch of tomorrows ever since. We've served roughly 1.7 million meals in now almost 25 years. I'm doing pretty good. Hello. During the day, people can come in and do their laundry, take a shower, uh, use our computer lab, uh, get mail services, use the phone. After everything closes for the day, we reopen at 6.30 for women, and we have an emergency shelter. Women can sleep on the floor with mats uh, from 6.30 till 6.30 in the morning. Then they leave, and we come back in the morning and start preparing breakfast. We'll have anywhere between 80 and several hundred people coming in here every day, many of them taking showers, doing their laundry. We fill prescriptions. We have volunteer doctors and nurses. I saw Peter. Who's Peter? I'm a family doc in Natividad, and I teach in the residency program there. You know, I think I do this because uh, somebody needs to. What's your birthday? Birthday 31730. Seven to six. I'll be seven to seven and March to seventeen. So what's the secret of your longevity? Well, good living, good eating. I get treated with a lot of respect and I get a lot out of it. Well, your blood pressure is good that. Maybe you will live forever. You know, I get more out of it than I think the people do. people to write checks, you know, that's obvious. But the point of this little film, the point of our lives isn't getting people to write checks, it's, to, it's getting people to come and see, like the volunteer students who are here today. You know, one of, one of my favorite stories is that of Pineapple. You know, Pineapple was a normal guy until his wife and kids were killed in an auto accident. He ran from his pain to Thunderbird Wine and ended up on our streets talking to telephone poles. If my wife and kids were killed in an auto accident, I don't know that I would be any different than Pineapple. People break, life happens, and the street is hard, the street is hard. The work that we do is about building relationships, you know, and we build those relationships chopping potatoes next to each other or, you know, cracking eggs together. And we have a collaboration with CSUMB. They've hired 10 of our folks from Dorothy's. So we have an economic development program that we're collaborating with them on. It's called the Garden Project. The university is committed to these 10 people for um, a, an entire year of part-time employment, and then we provide the supportive services to get housing, mental health services, those kind of things. How is the world going to know how great you are if you don't show them? As Muhammad Ali used to say. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Most of us here have been, at one time or another, volunteers at Dorothy's Place. I, I know that, for me, this has been, this is the first job I've had since 1989. A real job. Now when somebody sees me out by Kmart holding a sign, they say, you don't pay taxes? I says, yeah, I do. I do pay taxes. And um, uh, I pay my dues for my experience in Vietnam every single hour of every day.
we started um, our, at our women's shelter, we started making homemade t-shirts, homemade silkscreen t-shirts, and the women really got into it. Some of the men said, we want to be part of that. So we started this work cooperative where people can come and work and get a little bit of pocket change. So these are all handmade, but it is just one attempt at providing economic opportunities, which we, we all the people, when they tell us what they need, they need jobs, and so we're trying to be part of creating jobs. When I first got here, when you walked down the street, there was just litter everywhere, and a lot of people camping on the streets. And um, one of the things that we started to do was to sort of make it a, when people would say, I want to volunteer, we'd say, let's go outside and pick up trash. And so it got to be where someone every day now will come and ask for a broom. And people are keeping each other more accountable about like throwing trash, like, hey, you just threw that down, please pick it up. So the ownership of the neighborhood has changed. Our vision, our dream, our goal is to be part of ending homelessness, ending hunger in this country and around the world. There's, there's no reason why people should be hurting the way, the way they are in this country or any place. You know, if we serve another 1.7 million meals and I somehow live another 25 years, hoop de doo so what? You know, that's just a sign of either perseverance or insanity. And what, what we should be aiming at is how do we go out of business? What can we do to actually, truthfully, end homelessness in our community?